Hello class, finally we have gone through the introduction to the new history. We have gone through the prehistorical foundations for the new history. Now we are going to go over the new history. This is a long video. Please bear with me and I'm sure that you will learn something. Now, the new history is something that I propose and point one is that language is a nexus. This is not new um, knowledge. This is knowledge that's already been written about. Um, if you want to learn more about language, um, there are wonderful books written on the invention of language, and um, so I won't go into that. But all that to say is that point one, that language is a nexus from which all things come, um, or at least a lot of things come, including the, 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 uh, the invention of writing later on, uh, this is going to have an extreme importance in, in regards to the new history. So, as I start this, and we'll see that it, it will evolve into um, human uh, awareness of its own present state and condition, as well as the future state condition for the new history. So, as we see, as we see that we have society and human culture, um, society leads to the development of human cultures. Um, culture then um, presents certain value structures, uh, certain roles within society, and then also different knowledges that issue from human culture. Uh, within from human culture, we begin to develop a human psychology of how humans think about themselves and about the world. Uh, so our human psychology produces eventually gr grammar systems, uh, which may or may not produce a more sophisticated language than something that's just mere signs, symbols, grunt or grunts. Um, then we see that all this stacks up on top of each other, points to language. We also see that we, if we have a semantics and a lexicon, that also points to language. As we have society, culture, psychology, and grammar pointing to language, and then we also have, on the bottom part, we have uh, conversational analysis, uh, discourse and dialogues, um, uh, simple utterances, and pragmatics that also point to language. And then we have language is going a little bit further into phonetics, but then also into history. And so right here at the bottom, from which history comes from language, uh, we have a language in script form, language in writing. And it's this, this is what I want to discuss. So that in order to understand the new history, one must first have acquired extensive background knowledge of human prehistory, which we have already gone over. We have communication, which, which developed further into a language, language further developed into writing, and then, uh, then now I propose the new history. So we have first the animal kingdom, which across the line has the ability to communicate. From that animal kingdom issues forth a, a long series of different um, hominids that we will go over. We have what's called the homino hominoidea, which we get the gibbons and the hominidae. From the hominidae, we have our orangutans and our ho hominidae. So from hominidae come the hominidae. From the Huminine, we have our gorillas, and then we also uh, have our Hominini. So we go from Homininoidea to Hominide to Hominine to Hominini, and then from Hominini, we have the Pan genus, um, which are our, our chimpanzees, and then also from the Hominini, uh, we have the ha, ha, also a second group of Hominini. Um, the chimpanzees being our cousins. From ha, the, homin, the second group of hominini, we have the genus Artipithecus and then Australopithecus. From Australopithecus comes forth the genus Homo. Homo goes into Homo habilis. Homo habilis, we believe, was the first genus to, um, in verse species in the Homo genus, to have incipient language. Then from Homo habilis, we have Homo erectus stricto sensu and Homo erectus 
Burgaster. Homo erectus stricto sensu, we have the Denisovans, who also we think had language. And we have the Homo ne neanderthalensis, who we think also had language. But from, it is from Homo erectus or Gaster that we eventually come to the sapiens, the Homo sapiens sapiens. And then Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens sapiens also had language, uh, plus modern speech. And then history then is potentially possible by the complexification of the invention of language. And then, of course, from that, writing will eventually evolve into what I call the new history. The new history begins by understanding that language and its subsequent product, writing, is that which makes humans dominant. As primal beings, our old history had a preceding history. We now go into a primate phylogenetic tree where we have primates, and from that we have the Haplorhini and the Strepsirhini, which is Strepsirhini, we get lemurs and lorisoids. From the Haplorhini primates, we have the tower, tower, Tarsiforms and the Semiforms. From the tar, Tarsiforms, tar, Tarsiforms, we get the Tarsiers, and from the Semiforms, we get the Platyrrhini and the Catherini. From the Catherini, we have the Hominidoia, um, and the Old World Monkeys. From the Hominidoia, we have the, the Gibbons, as well as the Hominidia, which we've discussed earlier. And then from that group, we have, like I said before, the Orangutans and the Hominidae. The, from the Hominidae, we have the Gorillas and the Hominini, and Pan. And the Pan, we have, like I said before, we have Chimps. We also have Bonobos. From the Hominini, we have the Australopithecines, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and then Homo neanderthalensis, Homo denisova, and finally the Homo sapiens. Now, the reason why I go into this is an extremely important from the nexus of language a step towards an understanding of the nexus of writing. In archaeology and anthropology, we find indexes earlier than icons and icons earlier than symbols in the prehistoric record. Indexes are used by most, if not all, creatures on, the pla on planet Earth. Icons are recognized by fewer creatures, and symbols are used only by humans. And in understanding history, language, people, and their cultures, context is always extremely crucial. The question is, what was the organism, its connection to its environment, and the thing it invented, like the invention and eventual evolution of language. Researchers need to understand, however, that the evolution concerning the behaviors, physiology, and psychology of every creature on the planet, humans included. To engage the human species is to interact with the biological, cultural, and the psychological simultaneously as part of an extended evolutionary understanding of the new history. For there is no broad consensus on what culture is, for we only know what culture is by its direct products, which is why I am writing a new theory of history. This is from Bentley Everett, or this is from um, Everett from Bentley University, who wrote a, The Invention of Language, a book published in 2017 by Oxford University Press. He says, quote, culture is an abstract network shaping and connecting social roles, hierarchically structured knowledge domains and ranked values. Culture is dynamic, constantly changing and reinterpreted every moment. The roles, knowledge, and values of culture are only found in the brains and behaviors of its members. End quote. Culture is abstract, is not directly observable, but the products of culture are, i.e., Art, libraries, politics, food, music, literature, science, religion, architecture, morality, etc. Culture is found only in, in, in the individuals that constitute a society and members of society share a culture when they agree on values and their priority. Members of a society share a culture uh, and a knowledge and social roles. They observe expectations of different occupations among individual members of the society and each person uh, knows their place 
in their individual, individual societies. From here we go to a treatise on language. That human language begins as a communication symptom, or a communication system among the early hominids. But it was unlike the communication systems of other animals due to the fact that it was more efficient in being effective. And given that 800,000 to about 1.5 million years have passed since the appearances of the earliest of cultures, it is very difficult to extrapolate from the remnants of their artifacts and their material culture that they had language or not. Uh, we should not conclude prematurely that the absence of evidence about language or culture in the prehistoric record indicates that these human populations lacked the essential cognitive attributes that necessitated language. The earliest species of the genus Homo did in fact have culture and did speak. The solution to the mystery, however, of human language origins begins with an examination of the nature and evolution of the only surviving linguistic species, Homo sapiens, or Homo locrax, the speaking man. Human language emerges from the larger phenomenon of animal communication, and communication is nothing more than the transference of information. Now, whether this is through positions and movements or the writing and reading of books. The perspective on the evolution of language derives from an examination from both the biological and the cultural. We might ask a question at this juncture. How did the brain, the vocal apparatus, the movements of the human body in conjunction with culture affect and facilitate language evolution? We might also ask how similar are the human languages that are spoken today and what does the diversity of modern languages reveal about the first human languages? Language or not, Homo erectus valued taciturnity. If you don't know that word, I advise you to look it up. Each modern human of the new theory of history knows how to learn the knowledge that is common to all of its members and that they teach these things to their offspring. All humans have known their place in society and have past and present learned these things. Indeed, language was invented, but was subsequently changed gradually through all species of the genus Homo to fit different cultures and in different environments. Languages need only words and simple phrases, allowing context to guide their correct interpretation, and different levels of complexity are to be expected among the languages of the Earth. Language, given its biological basis, is constructed by psychology, history, and culture. And so, as part of a new history, the nexus of language, which we have already discussed, was a step towards an understanding concerning the nexus of writing and a new theory of history. The new history starts with a new proposal for a worldwide um, control over the human species. It is a federal New World governmental state under one law and justice system. In a sense, it is a federational republic. It is a worldwide in its democratic and socialistic aims. Aristotle was right in saying that man is a political animal. We are indeed, since we have language, we have used language to subdue other peoples, and um, this was happening before we even had language. We used power um, to, uh, and politics even before we had language. Language just allowed us to communicate it a lot more efficiently, as writing allows us to communicate our language more efficiently in a more um, nuanced and detailed sense. A new order however, I think, must need be established in social, economic, and international affairs. We have gotten to the point now, especially in terms of nuclear warfare and nuclear warheads, being owned and operated by nine different countries, much different than the Soviet Union and United States of the, of the Cold War period. Um, we now have only about 12,000 nuclear warheads, but we used to have 60,000 in back in the 80s. Now, though, the nuclear warheads are a lot more efficient and vastly more destructive. 
Now, I need not get more into this, but a new order does need to be established in eternal affairs for the loyalties and allegiances today are at best provisional. Um, our true state, to which every human owes utmost political effort, um, this federal world state represents and symbolizes that our true nationality is humankind as a species in general. Uh, but will humans of the new history identify themselves with this necessity? This is a crucial, this is a crucial question um, in order to revise their ideas, remake their institutions, and educate the world in regard to this final extension of history and for the citizens of the entire globe. Unity must come or humans will ultimately perish as a result of their own inventions. Indeed, we believe in the unlimited power of human reason and cognitive faculties, but there must also be a great process of education by precept, by information, and by experience, for the attainment of a world peace is now one of the supreme works in existence. Many are working for this great end by pen and persuasion, in schools and colleges and books, in the highways of public life. But most human beings are without any clear sense of what must be done and what needs to be prevented in order that human solidarity might be advanced. The base ferocious and individual impulses that divide the humans from one another have firmly been the powers of religion and education. In the intellectual conflicts of the 19th century, the exceptional disentanglement or of religious teachings from the formal education is a magnificent distinct feature of our age. Given the last five and 20 centuries at present, education must again be extensively intentional. The current political and social formulae have lost their power of conviction, and the greater idea of a world state and of an economic commonwealth is slowly but surely being recognized for a perpetual peace and prosperity. Between the late 18th century and the late 21st century, which has not occurred yet, it is in fact beyond our present time, emerges a moral and intellectual revival concerning one common and sustained way of living for the service of the entire planet. A sufficient intelligence produced presently from the lessons of history gives impetus to an effective will for a world law under a world government. An understanding of the old history at the present time, we, we know that there is little in the political constitution of such countries as the United States or Switzerland that would impede their coalescence upon terms with other equally civilized and developed confederations. Political systems involving dependent states require their destruction, perhaps before they can be adapted to our federal world system. But this is to be said in an extreme, extremely limited and loose sense. For any country or state obsessed by the unsound traditions of an aggressive foreign policy, will by far be difficult to assimilate into a new world order. It is an educational task, therefore, to bring to the minds of all humans a necessary basis for world cooperation, a new history that is nonviolent. This project is at first a, a one of union. It's ultimately destined to be superseded by something more complete and greater, as were the United States Articles of Confederation by the Federal Constitution. This project is the supreme task of political education, to prepare the minds of humans by knowledge and thought. In a, t in a sense, I am attempting to recast and consolidate all of human affairs by teaching and propaganda, and by the studies of international power, sciences, and arts, the historical teachings of that, therefore, each proposition will be flattened to fit a common culture of custom, because many humans are weary to see what so much has been done on their behalf, and what has in fact been made possible to them. We move commandingly towards an adequate, not assumed, world control. This would be called Operation Commando. There are five big objectives to this. First would be the elimination of dis destructiveness of war waged with the new powers of science and technology that are rapidly advancing in the world. Secondly, there's the fusion of the world's entire economy into one overarching system, common control of currency, safe and uninterrupted communications, a free movement of open market goods, and people equally distributed throughout the entire world of sea and land. This objective requires a world control of considerable power of enforcement. The third would be the complete and effectual control of all health. Fourth would be an established minimal standard, very laissez-faire, for everyone, 
of life and education. And fifthly, it would be have to have a complete control of all land, sea, and airways. I'm aware that the difficulties will arise due to differences in language and even with translation techniques. It is a conscious struggle of mine to establish a holistic political world community and commonwealth. These things are beyond my control, but things set up in humanity's minds by education and suggestion are things for the welfare and survival of the individual existence of the world. Indeed, the attainment of the world state has a powerful force, that of the free and developing common intelligence of humankind. And there is in the world a small number of historians, archaeologists, anthropologists, eth ethnologists, economists, psychologists, sociologists, and educationists, who are making plain the greater and more urgent of human affairs and conditions. So now I would go over the broad fundamentals of the future world state of the new history. One, humans' thoughts and motives will be spurred by education, the obsession of the human's individual image, and the dutiful service of human knowledge, human power, and human unity. Second, sustained by a universal education of quality beyond all present global experience, the human race will be educated. Parents will have a technical knowledge of teaching given that 10% of the adult population will, at some appointed time, be working in the world's educational organization. Education in the new history will not cease at any particular age, but humans will become self-educators, individual students, and eventually student teachers. In this envisioned utopia, there will be a one-world militia, which means that employment will rise, every person will be employed and used in whatever they can contribute. Fourthly, the world state's organization of historical records and scientific research. Fifth, free inquiry and free literature, free speech and freedom of the press, a society open to criticism and continual discussion. Six, the political organization will be a one world federal democratic socialist republic. The government and direction of affairs will be immediate and responsive to the general thoughts of the educated whole. Economic organization. The control and exploitation of all natural resources, distributed proportionally and conservatively, with every possibility that science reveals, being for the common good of the entire human population and all other species on our planet. The eighth point is that political well-being demands free and open electoral methods. Economic well-being requires a secure currency used against the contrivances and the manipulations of dishonest humans. The Federation of Humanity will ensure equality of opportunity to most that are born into the world, and this would mean a new phase in human history, just as in the experience of the long 19th century and the changes of technology and have drastically affected the way in which humans experience the world. So this no, new phase in human history will do the same. Things that would automatically cease would be threefold. Wasted time spent on military preparations, Wasted time competing for natural dominance or hegemony. Uh, wasted time given the underproductiveness of great masses of people. One, too wealthy to stimulate from leisure. Or two, poor, too poor to actually be of efficient value. And a multitude of people would be transferred from low-grade production work to higher forms of work as researchers and teachers in and of the sciences and the arts. A lesson from history, the old history, is of the Tang and Ming periods in art in China, an example of what a whole world of sustained security would be able to yield unhindered, continually and cumulatively. Without supposing change in human qualities of the old history from which we glean from, the new history is a release from the present governmental nation-state system of inordinate waste. The old history is the justifier of this expectation. Given the liberation of human thought due to the Renaissance and the following philosophical, mechanical, scientific, and industrial, and historical revolutions, a comparatively few intelligent individuals were able to produce a vision of the world and a body of science and technologies that are now revolutionizing human life and existence of experience. Many of these individuals worked against great discouragements with insufficient funds and small support from the general mass of humankind. But the last three centuries, the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries, have produced hundreds of individuals who never had the chance of improving their quality 
a world with secure and perpetual international peace. The capacity of universal education may expect a yield beyond any comparison greater than that of the old history has ever shown. A world order and one universal law of justice would begin an unending exploration upon the edge of experience and the great freedoms of the world that the work of science has given. Life will go with a stronger pulse, breathe a deeper breath, and will conquer a hundred infections in the physiological life and in the intellectual pursuits of humankind. This will be done through the endless creation of the machines of automation, which will eventually entirely lift the burden of routine work that, have, that has been so long been the focus of humans since the prehistoric times and since the dawn of the first civilizations of, in the Pleistocene. From the minds of future generations, these generations will cease to work under pressure due to the age of autonomous machines. It will still work, plan, create, and research in that which is in accordance with their passions. At this point in time, every human being, gentle in breeding and healthy in bodily and body and brain, has access to explore the entire planet on which they lived and possibly other planetary systems. The old civilizations of the old history created tradition and they lived and died by it. The power of the new history is that the power of tradition has been all but completely destroyed, but the body of our state is still what we understand old history civilization to be. But even this will change given several centuries or even millennia. Perhaps one of the first fruits of the new history is an effective world state, and that would be the better protection of ourselves and other organisms that inhabit our planet's biosphere. Leading attempts to learn about and befriend all creatures, even the ones we no longer fear as enemies, hate as rivals, or use as slaves. In a world state and a universal justice. This is a state still very much like our own, where people will live, follow different roles, and experiment with a diverse compass of contributions, where the adequate utilization of distinctive quality is in an atmosphere of correct and undubitable understanding. The historian of the new history wants future citizens of the world to be better educated, happier in their circumstances, freer and healthier than themselves. There is infinite space for improvement in all human concerns. I foresee that potentially private businesses and enterprises will refuse to learn in a temporary phase of potential confiscation and pure socialistic government might have to ensue before the whole world as a global uh, people um, start to uh, see these things. Um, and perhaps some of these things are unnecessary, uh, but they might in turn be unavoidable. In the end of the new history does not come about, in the end, if the new history does not come about, human old history will rise again and hold the humans in a scheme of order for a limited time. Only before the entire human population collapses and amidst the misery and slaughter of generations of humans. We saw what happened in the 20th century. We saw that rapid genocide and war has devastated our world, has devastated the minds of humans, has devastated the environments of other populations on our planet. The old history teaches us a lesson, however, that it is 500 years since the great empire of the Aztecs believed that it could live only by the shedding of blood. The new history day may come when we no longer tear out the hearts of humans, even for the sake of our national gods. Thank you for listening to my proposal of the new history. Something that is extremely complex and potentially difficult to understand. Some people will think that this idea is something too extravagant, too broad, uh, too detailed in some sense, and that it's not going to be able to fit the wants and the needs of the majorities of peoples and cultures around the entire globe. I understand that our nation states are relatively new and that it will take some time before we have a worldwide cooperation, but we need to understand that it was because of cooperation that got us out of Africa in the first place and led us to newer ways of free thinking and imagination. Thank you.